In Good Shape, your weekly dose of health information on DWTV. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio every week to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. An expert for therapies to help with thyroid disease is my guest in the studio today, Dr. Matthias Pierlich, endocrinologist from Berlin. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Dr. Pierlich, the thyroid gland can be overactive and underactive and that can result in a big variety of symptoms. What are sort of telltale signs? One key symptom is an unexplained change of body weight. So you might have an increase or a decrease of body weight despite normal food intake. So this is one, one sign. But you can also experience um, changes of bowel habits, diarrhea, constipation, loss of hair, some Patients with overproduction of thyroid hormones, um, they get very nervous, they get sleepless or they sweat a lot. So really a whole bunch of different uh, symptoms. Mm -hmm. A whole bunch of symptoms and symptoms that we all might experience from time to time for different reasons. When can you be sure that you have to go and see a doctor? When the doctor tells you. <laughs> no, I mean, um, it's a kind of pattern. So if you have more than one of these signs, you should think about thyroid diseases. And also if you fear something is going on um, with your neck. So if you fear maybe there's a swelling or you have swelling disorders or breathing disorders. So, so you mentioned uh, an enlargement in your neck, that, that goiter. Um, how important is iodine in that context when you feel a goiter forming? Now, the most important reason for goiter is iodine deficiency. So it's estimated that about 15% of the whole world population um, have an enlarged uh, thyroid gland. So it's a very common disease, very, very frequent, uh, frequently observed. Mm -hmm. So if it's so common, if you feel an enlarged goiter, is that something to really worry about? Or No, in the majority of cases, um, it is not really dangerous. So if you have an adequate iodine intake, may, maybe by supplementation or because you're eating a lot of seafood, then you can treat the goiter by yourself. So it's shrinking then. And in some cases, it, it can be dangerous, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a goiter is pretty much a telltale sign that you should go and see your doctor. Okay. Um, who else should be really cautious? Who should be, who's most prone to thyroid gland diseases? So in general, if you live in an area where the, the ground is uh, iodine depleted, and this is in all countries far from the ocean, because most of our iodine on Earth is in the uh, ocean water. So um, if you live in this area, for instance, the Alpine region, then you have a high risk to develop uh, thyroid diseases. But also uh, women are more um, likely um, to, uh, to develop thyroid diseases than men. And the same is in pregnancy. Some of the autoimmune diseases you mentioned before uh, can occur more frequently during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So women have to be careful, pregnant women especially. And can you mention again the areas in which uh, iodine deficiencies are common? Um, I have to say in Europe, more than half of all countries are iodine depleted uh, or deficient. And some areas in North America, some places in Asia, it's not uh, so easy to say because in, for instance, in Africa, some countries have a good iodine uh, intake and some not. So you should uh, maybe um, look for information given by the WHO organization. World, World Health, Health Organization. organization. Mm -hmm. They provide maps of areas. Okay. And if you feel you have a problem with um, your thyroid gland, if you feel you might have a disorder, what kind of doctor should you be seeing? If you have an experienced general practitioner, um, he or she might uh, take care of it because it's a so common disease, many physicians are experienced. But if it's a more specialized disease or a serious disease, you need a specialist. And the specialist is an internist trained in endocrine diseases, we call them endocrinolo endocrinologists. Um, you might also go to an experienced nuclear medicine doctor or a good surgeon. So try a big hospital that might help. That might help, yeah. Dr. Pierlich, um, it depends on the cause, of course, but generally speaking, what kinds of therapies are there for thyroid disorders? In general, we have three different uh, types of therapy. The first is just medication. You give pills. 
And this is appropriate, especially for under function. You just replace thyroid hormone. It's a very easy and convenient uh, treatment. And then if you have certain problems, for instance, you have nodules looking suspicious, then you need surgery in mm -hmm. some cases. You mentioned the nodules. Uh, can you explain quickly what they are and when they are cause for concern? Nodules, um, this is uh, tissue within the thyroid gland which looks different in ultrasound, for instance. And, and you can sometimes uh, tell they are benign and sometimes you suspect it could be cancer even. Mm -hmm. So in these cases, you need more diagnostic procedures and then finally uh, surgery. Mm -hmm. All right, but let's go back to the therapy. So you said medication yeah. to replace the uh, thyroid hormones if yeah. there aren't uh, enough produced. That's one way. What other forms of therapy are there? The third um, important um, treatment procedure is uh, radioactivity ablation. So, yeah, you give a pill containing iodine, which is radioactive and which is taken from the thyroid gland tissue and destroys specifically the cells there. That's if you have an enlarged thyroid gland and it has to be sort of cut down to its normal size. That's what happens. Yeah. Usually if there are some specific nodules you want to treat. Okay. Well, that sounds sort of... Um could, sounds as if it could be harmful to take a radioactive substance. Uh, your view as a doctor, is that something to worry about? Not really. We would not recommend if it's uh, really dangerous. Of course. So, um, we have no... In, yeah no fear of, of long-lasting side effects. Mm -hmm. This is really a um, well-tolerated therapy. And if you need it, um, yeah, you shouldn't be afraid of it. Mm -hmm. What about surgery quickly? When is surgery recommended? Yeah, if in, you have a nodule suspicious for cancer or with the goiter is very big and causing trouble at the neck, then you need surgery. Mm -hmm. And surgery is a safe procedure as well. Mm -hmm. What's the outlook for someone with a thyroid disorder? In general, very good. So there are only very, very few cases with um, uh, yeah, complicated cancer. They might not have such good outlook. Mm -hmm. And what uh, can you do to prevent a thyroid disorder in the first place? The best prevention is to have a good and adequate iodine intake. This prevents almost all uh, thyroid diseases. So what should you be eating to get up your iodine intake? Yeah, seafood is uh, recommended and uh, people living at the ocean, um, they suffer very rarely from thyroid diseases. Okay, so seafood, tasty and healthy. Well, thank you for being our guest today. Thanks for your time.